and I'm Samuel Phillips. Thanks so much for joining us. One of the children injured in the fatal Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport sign accident has been released from the hospital. Five-year-old Tyler Bressett was released Sunday after being treated for a concussion. A large digital sign weighing between 300 and 400 pounds fell from the wall, killing his 10-year-old brother, Luke. The children's mother is still in the hospital and is listed in serious condition. His eight-year-old brother, Sam, is also still in the hospital and is listed in good condition. An airport spokesperson says the investigation into the accident is ongoing. A teenager accused of shooting a 13-month-old baby to death now faces murder charges. The 15-year-old boy, suspected in the shooting of a baby in Brunswick, Georgia, was charged with mur murder today. The Glenn County judge didn't say if the teen would be charged as a juvenile or adult. 17-year-old DeMar Marquis Elkins also faces murder charges. The mother of the murdered child says the two teens robbed her in a park as she was pushing her child in a stroller. They then shot her twice and her baby once in the face. This week, a very controversial topic will take center stage at the U.S. Supreme Court as justices hear arguments about same-sex marriage. Tori Dunnan has a preview of what's at stake for both sides. people from lining up outside the U.S. Supreme Court for a chance to witness history. They're vying for limited seats inside the courtroom where oral arguments will be heard this week in two cases regarding same-sex marriage. Wednesday, the justices will hear arguments on the Defense of Marriage Act, also known as DOMA. But first, California's controversial Proposition 8 is on the docket for Tuesday. Yes on eight. Yes on eight. Prop 8, passed in 2008, amended the state constitution to ban same-sex marriage. Opponents say it's discriminatory and unconstitutional. When you put the face of discrimination uh, on families and friends, that people understand there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to discriminate against gays and lesbians uh, to, from exercising their fundamental right to marry. DOMA, passed in 1996, defines marriage at the federal level as a union between a man and woman. This week, the highest court will be asked whether the government can deny same-sex couples the same rights as heterosexual couples, even in the nine states and District of Columbia where same-sex marriage is legal. Why do we have to be married locally but federally? It's, it's nothing. We're, we're friends. People who support Prop 8 and DOMA say they are not issues that should be settled in the courts. Americans have an inevitable and inalienable right to determine our own history, and that's really a fundamental aspect of America. The court is expected to issue a ruling in June. In Washington, I'm Tori Dunnan reporting. This comes at a time when an increasing number of Americans, 53 percent, support same-sex marriage according to national polls. Alabama fan Harvey Updike has pleaded guilty to poisoning the oak trees at Toomer's Corner in Auburn. Prosecutors said in a statement Friday, Updike will serve at least six months of a three-year sentence for criminal damage to an agricultural facility. He will also serve five years of supervised probation, which prohibits Updike from going into Auburn's campus. The damaged trees are scheduled to be removed April 23rd. Spring break may be over for UM, but thousands of students around the country are enjoying spring break this week. But all that fun in the sun is landing some students in trouble with the law. Along the Gulf Coast, in Florida, Walton County Sheriff's de deputies have issued almost 600 citations as of last Thursday for underage drinking since March 1st. That's up 50% from last year. Meanwhile, citations in Destin and Fort Walton have dropped from 542 last year to 69. Gulf Shores officials say arrests are about the same as last year, with between 60 and 70 a week. Coming up, students are calling for major changes to UM's dining services. Hear why one official says even if a new company comes in, things may stay the same. And it's already time to be thinking about summer and fall classes. Hear what the problems students encounter when they try to register. Those stories and more when Falcon Weekly returns. With students returning from spring break this week, it's already time to start thinking about registering for next semester. Stefan Vaziri tells us more. With only a few short weeks left before finals, the semester is winding down and sign-up sheets for advising are starting to appear on the outside of professors' doors. It is time to sign up for advising and start deciding what courses you want to enroll in this summer or next fall. 
Pat Ibrahimi, Senior Departmental Secretary of the Department of Communication, warns us of some common mistakes students make when registration time rolls around. Uh, the earlier they get advised and get their classes in, the better for them. Some people wait around and wait around and don't do anything about it, and then it's too late and everything's closed and they're not able to get what they want. Registration for seniors starts on April 3rd, juniors starts April 5th, sophomores April 9th, and freshmen can register on April 11th. Grad, grad student registration open today. Make sure you get in with your advisor early to make sure you don't miss out on registering for your desired courses. Back to you guys. SGA elections are right around the corner. Students can vote starting this Monday, April 3rd at 8 a.m. Voting takes place on Blackboard and lasts through April 3rd at 3 p.m. Be sure to get online and make your voice heard. It's a topic that can instantly spark debate campus-wide, the university's dining service, Sodexo. Complaints about the service range from lack in quality and nutrition of the food to sharp declines in service, with an even sharper increase in prices, cafeteria committee member Laura Beth Asklin said that the process to fund Sodexo's replacement is underway, but odds are strong that it won't be a drastic improvement. Um, a lot of the contenders basically have the same price range, so they're all pretty cheap. They'll all be very similar to the services offered by Sodexo today. So whatever we get will probably not be too much different than what we have right now. For more information about Sodexo and the other dining services competing for the university contract, visit the SGA offices in the Student Life Center in Farmer Hall. The UM Department of Theater is kicking off their Spring Theater Festival on March 28th, which will continue until the 30th. Four short plays directed by four student directors will be presented each night. General admission tickets are $3. Shows begin at 7.30 p.m. in the Chichester Theater. For more information, call the number on your screen. Imagine spending hundreds of dollars on a brand new iPad from a major retailer only to find out that you bought a fake. It happened to one Massachusetts woman. We'll tell you where she bought the fake iPad. And UM are confessing secrets online. We take a closer look at the Facebook craze that has everyone on campus talking. Those stories and more when Falcon Weekly returns. Welcome back to Falcon Weekly. Some iPad buyers are getting a very unpleasant surprise when they open their new gadget. A Massachusetts woman says the iPad she bought from a Boston area Walmart was fake. Walmart at first declined to offer an exchange or refund because of store policy, but later refunded her money. Company officials say that they are aware of the problem and working to address it. Walmart isn't the only retailer de dealing with this issue. Best Buy had problems with fake iPads. Facebook is currently working on a new graph search function that will help its users easily sort through information in photos and likes. It is being tested on a small group of beta users, but you can sign up for a wait list. According to the Facebook director Tom Stocky, this new function will take everything that you already see on Facebook and give you an easier way to search through it. He also says it will be released slowly so they can have enough feedback to tweak it as it is made available for more users. Every town has its gossip. In Montevallo, word has spread quickly, and it's not by mouth. Falcon Weekly Savannah Kid shows us how one Facebook group has caused quite the stir. For over nine years, Facebook has been binding people together by reuniting friendships. Its group feature has enabled users to create groups of people with common interests. One group here at Montevallo, called Montevallo Confessions, has united people and caused conflicting interests simultaneously. Though it was created for users to anonymously relieve a confession, it has also been used for individuals to speak their mind, whether it be about other individuals or groups of people. UM student Lindsay Tillman says the page is somewhat good for campus. Yeah, I think if you're going to have compliments of the campus, you've got to have confessions of the stuff that's, that nobody wants to say. The range of confessions sent in has been pretty broad. Some comments remain innocent, such as the one saying, I'm looking forward to going to UM this fall while some other comments are pretty bold. Posting a comment to the page is simple. The page provides a link to submit on a Google Doc to remain completely anonymous. The page creator, who prefers to remain anonymous, emailed me answering a few questions regarding the creation of their page. Though most things submitted are posted, certain subjects are filtered, such as people's names being used. 
As to who this page creator is, they are a freshman commuter and the rest is left up for guessing. Some people who view the page say it brings negative attention to Montevallo. Others say it's a great source for receiving comfort and relief. For Falcon Weekly, I'm Savannah Kidd reporting. Though the group was created barely two weeks ago, it has already received over 1,000 likes. Swishing gears to weather, people in Australia got a dangerous surprise on Friday as drivers looked to the skies to see a tornado forming. This video captured by onlookers shows as the massive funnel cloud started forming 25 miles outside of Victoria in Mueela, Australia. The series of tornadoes tore through both cities in a matter of minutes, injuring at least 80 people and resulting in millions of dollars in damages. Closer to home, the Magic City was hit with its own share of bad weather over the weekend. Heavy rains from Friday night and Saturday morning resulted in heavy flooding in the downtown area. It was just the start of a turn in the forecast, as Sunday afternoon and evening brought damaging straight-line winds and golf ball-sized hail in North Alabama. Wild weather patterns continued to cross the globe over the weekend as people in the Ukraine got an unexpected change in the forecast. People in Kyiv, Ukraine woke up this morning to find 24 inches of snow had built virtually overnight. It was a welcome surprise for area snowboarders who took the opportunity to turn Andrew's descent into a makeshift slope. The Kyiv administration issued an official state of emergency, while the Ukrainian president has ordered all government agencies to assist those affected by the sudden snowstorms. Although the campus of Montevallo was off for spring break, the sports teams were in action. Raisha Albright joins us now for a look at sports. Montevallo baseball and the tennis saw all saw play plus well. Plus well recap the latest in the March Madness tournament. This and more nets and sports. The baseball team played a three-game series this weekend against Lander University. The Falcons lost the first game 11 to 5 and in, in the second game freshman Jeremy Hyde dove, drove Andrew Hill with a RBI in the start of the eighth inning and the Falcons won 4 to 3. In the tiebreaker game the the of the series, Vinny Rodriguez led the Falcons at the plate as he finished 3-4-4 with a double and brought in two home runs. But the Lander Bearcats took the home took home the victory with a 12-5 win. The Falcons are now ranked 27 in the NCAA Division II baseball poll. The men's basketball team lost to Bearton College 81 to 73 in the NCAA Division II Southern Region Tournament quarterfinals at the USC Aiken Convention Center. The Bearton Bulldogs were the number three seed in the tournament and shot 50% beyond the arc, while the Falcons shot 27.3% from beyond the arc. The second lowest percent of the season. Sophomore Taran Brown led the Falcons with 26 points from the floor and three from the arc. Switching gears to tennis, the, the women's tennis team won a PBC match against UNC Pembroke 6-3. The Falcons won three singles matches and all three doubles matches against the Braves. In another PBC match, the Falcons lost to Flagger College 6-3. The Falcons won one of the single matches and two of the doubles matches against the Saints. March, Mad March Madness is here and colleges, college basketball teams across the country are preparing to play for the NCAA tournament. Four regional games will be played between March 31st and the final four games will be hosted by Georgia Tech at the Georgia Dome in April. April 6th and 8th. That's a look at sports. Thanks, Raisha. Most flub golf shots end up in a bush or even in a lake, but one golfer ended up in a tree at the Arnold Palmer Invitational Sunday. One of Sergio Garcia's tee shots landed on a tree, and Garcia decided to climb the tree to take his second shot. The golfer ended up with a double bogey for the hole, and a few holes later, Garcia withdrew from the tournament. That's all the time we have for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. 
For more UM News, be sure to check out the Falcon News Network blog. The web address is on your screen. We'll see you again next week.